be just naturally who you are. And discover the work you're born to do or the work that you were born to do is the concrete stepping stones towards you actualizing your purpose. So the minute you step into what you were born to do, you are really starting to already live your purpose. And, and that's really is the subtle difference. So this, the work you're born to do is very concrete. It's very practical. This is who you are. These are. This is the direction that you need to go into. Whereas the purpose is very, very big and broad, and it's not very specific in what you need to be doing to actually get to your purpose. Yeah, does that yeah. make sense? Yeah, definitely. This makes sense, definitely, because I'm just reflecting on what you say to myself, because I am somebody yeah. who has lots of interests, right? And and maybe that's the reason I kind of struggle, like, where do I fit in? Because I enjoy every aspect of life. Yeah, and, yeah, and definitely. So how would you help somebody like me? I'm sure there's so many out there probably <laughs> in the same sort of shoes as I am, right? How yeah, do you, do you know what? Um I tell you what, what, one of the things that 99% of the courses I went on to, you have to have a passion, okay? Because the two, the two areas they look at really are your passions and your talents. And I, that was my very, very first stumbling block because I didn't even have a passion to start with. You know, there were things I liked, there, there were things I liked doing. But there wasn't anything I could put my finger on and say, hang on, I absolutely, absolutely, absolutely love doing this. And then there were people who were like you, who had so many different passions. And it was like, well, which one do you choose? Which one do you choose? Because there's like loads of them. And how do you, you know, weigh one up against the next? No, it's not even passion. It's more like interest, right? You know, like yeah. enjoy. Yeah. So I, yeah. I can't even say it's passion, right? It's more like loads of interest. It's interest. Oh, do you know what we do? On, on Discover the Work You're Born to Do, we have totally done away with the word passions. And yeah. what the exercise we do is activities that you're drawn to. And these are like your everyday activities that you're happy doing. And what I found was when I analyzed what I'm doing now in my job, the thing, the activities that actually sh- directed me to this were reading books and watching television, which is, I, I wouldn't even say, you know, it's something that I just did every single day. You know, sometimes I'd watch television to relax at the end of a long day. Sometimes I'd just read a book at the end of the day to, to relax my mind. But for the most part, um, the activities that you do, they're the ones that are, you find time for them all the time. They are, mm. sorry, I was just hearing a beep in the background. It was distracting sorry, me. Was, yeah, sorry, that's okay. sorry. yeah, and what, what it is, it's those little consistent actions that you do every single day that you don't need motivation for, that when you do it, you're, you're, you're in flow. You're not forcing yourself to do it. You are happy to do it. Every single activity like that tells you something about you. And it's understanding what that is. And I think most of the time when people follow their passions, it doesn't necessarily guarantee A, success, or B, that they're going to be happy. Because in my line of accounting, when when I had my firm, when I had my own accountancy firm, unfortunately, there were a few people who were following their passions and said, oh, my God, I love graphic designing. I'm going to start my business doing this. And unfortunately, it just never succeeded for them. And, And they closed up their company and they were very disillusioned at the end of it. So even following your passion doesn't even guarantee that it is going to be successful. So... For people like you who have more than one, what we got get you to do is really, really list out every single activities that you're drawn to, yeah? And then we do an exercise which is called your inner codes, understanding what your inner codes are. And your inner codes, really in a nutshell, if they're existing in your life, you are happy and you're in flow. But if they're restricted in any way at all, you're going to be very, very unhappy, And so what we do, we help you to ascertain what these inner codes are. And then what we do is we take every single activity that you're drawn to, 
and we map it back to your inner code to see which one of these activities really, really support who you are. And then you can start to shortlist those activities. And bearing in mind, it doesn't necessarily have to be one. It doesn't have to be one. If you have a few that, you, that support who you are, then by all means, you could pursue most of them and bring most of them into your life to understand, to start that journey of what you were born to do. And the more you step into it, the more it starts to refine itself. And then suddenly you're, you're really flowing then. Does, does, that, does that help in any way? So, yeah, it does. So something like, okay, let's talk more about the inner quotes now, right? So I think this mm-hmm. is something you do in your workshops, right? So yes, I just want to understand yeah. the process a bit more. So somebody listening out there, what are these inner codes? Like if you can give okay. me a few examples. So, right. Okay. So these inner codes, they are similar to values, similar to values. They, they almost take on the same name, but they're not values. Okay. Now, what I always say to people, because the minute I get a coach and I say, you need to look at your inner codes, they say, oh, I know my inner codes already. Well, chances are you probably don't because most people look at values as something that's important to them. And that is great. However, it is something that is, it's a mental process to, to help you understand what's important to you. You choose it mentally. Okay. And if you're choosing it at a conscious level means that it could be, um, it could be infused with somebody else's values or it could be influenced by society. So it's, mm-hmm. it probably isn't pure in its state. Okay. Now the inner codes, on the other hand, you were born with it. It didn't choose, you didn't choose it. It chose you. So it's who you are at your core at a very, very unconscious level. And what we do in all our courses is, is really our, our, our main job is to bring what is unconscious or what is unseen to the scene, yeah, to make you aware of it. So with these inner codes, we ask you very, very salient questions like, um, you know, what's your favorite book? What's your favorite movie? What does your perfect day look like? What's your favorite animal? Because these are all very unconscious things. Why are you drawn to this particular animal? Why, why do you want to do this on this particular day? And what we do is we put all of that together and see which codes come out the most. And usually you find that. So for instance, one of my, um, one of my inner codes is freedom. It's, it, it's quite big with me. So what shows up with freedom, um, the sound of music. That's by far my favorite show. And it is because of this sense of breaking free, being up on the mountains. You have all the freedom in the whole wide world. My favorite animal is, is a dragon taking to the skies. And again, that sense of freedom and that sense of, of, of just no boundaries and no limits. And so it's, it's really salient things like this that help you to uncover what is truly, truly driving you at your core. And so that, that, in a nutshell, is what the inner codes are all about. And once you understand them, because you know if they're in your life, you're happy, and if they're not in your life, you're not happy, you use them very much as decision-making tools. So for a lot of um, the, the people that leave our courses, once they know their inner codes, so for instance, um, we had a lovely lady, Yitka, um, she was on our course at the weekend. Now she did uh, discover the work you're born to do about a year ago. She came to us and she said, I left my job because it wasn't given me any of my inner codes. And now I am getting all of my inner codes in this job. And this was, I think she came to me about a month ago. And then she gave me another call and she said, my job description is changing. And she said, I'm not getting my inner codes anymore. And I'm starting to feel really, really uncomfortable. So she said, now I need to find another job where I know I can get my inner codes. So she follows hers to the letter because she knows if those inner codes are there, she's going to be happy. If they're not there, she's going to be very unhappy in her job. And so this is what the inner codes do. It, it is understanding because whatever you're born to do, you need to know that you're going to be happy doing it obviously. So if you could map your activities back to your inner codes, you know for sure following those activities is going to definitely guide you to what it is you were born to do. 
Okay. Just coming back to the inner cause, are they anyway influenced by the environment you are in or the company you keep, the people you surround with? No, they- no. It, it really, really isn't. Um, because of the depths that we go to and, and it's, breathing, it's, it's really bringing out all of these unconscious patterns about you. So, for instance, uh, so going back to my, my sense of freedom, with your inner codes, you unconsciously find a way to get that inner code. So if it's been restricted in any way, your body will find a way to get it. So for instance, um, I absolutely hated, hated school from primary school all the way up. Now, at the time in my in my twenties, I thought I hated school because I didn't like the teachers, I didn't like the subjects, you know those those sort of things, those sort of excuses your your mind comes up with, your stories the mind comes up. But the reality of it, it was because I had absolutely no freedom in my school life. I had to show up on time, I had to leave when they tell me, I had to do everything they tell me, I had to follow the rules. And so when I was in primary school, I used to get very very ill. I almost, um, I would be in class and I almost couldn't breathe. So every so often I would have to go outside. The teacher would take me outside and then I would almost feel, oh my God, I can breathe. I can breathe again. This is great. And it reached to the point when I was in uh, secondary school, because I was a bit older, I used to run away from school. I would get there and think, "I, I can't deal with this. And I would immediately run away. So even though the environment was very, very restricting, my inner code was trying to tell me this is not right for you. This is not right for you. So this is what happens with your inner codes. You unconsciously try to find a way to have it in your life all the time. And if it's not in your life, you're, you're very, very uncomfortable, very uncomfortable, and you're frustrated. And, and most times, if people don't recognize what their inner codes are, they use different excuses to justify why they're unhappy. They blame outside circumstances. They blame people. They blame their environment when, in fact, all it is is your inner codes are not being met and you need to change that environment or change whatever it is that needs changing for you to really be happy and, and understand that. Yeah. yeah so of course, I mean, I have two kids, right? And of course, I want to give them best start in life, right? So yeah. I want to, of course, find what they really enjoy and then make the most of it because I find people who uh, enjoy what is people in some way succeed or give 100 percent to that sorry sorry so mina can you just sorry mina can you just repeat that because i just lost you there for about two seconds okay i'm just talking about a, a mother like me with two kids yeah right? i just want to mm-hmm. give them the best start like i don't want to be at in a process where they do something for a little while and then they realize this is not what they're meant to be doing or this is not what they enjoy yeah so how as a mother, how can I help my child? Ooh, that's a good question. That's a very, very good question. Now, one of the things I would say is whatever they're gravitating towards, support them. And I know children have a habit of changing and changing and changing. You know, they'll play piano for about a year and then they decide, oh, my God, I'm fed up with this. I need to do something else. But what I would say to you is this changing is them trying to find themselves. Most of the time, it's them trying to find themselves. What I would say to you is, when they give it up, or if they're giving it up, ask them, what is it about it that they were drawn to in the first place? Because we always go towards something. It may not give us everything we need, so they're drawn, say, if they're playing piano for, the, for a year, and then they decided to give it up. They are drawn to that piano for a reason, Okay. They give it up because it's not given them everything that they need as yet. So as a mother, I would try to discern exactly what are the things that they're getting from it at the moment and try and find a connection between that and the next thing they're into. You know, because, you, you know, I don't have children myself, so so I'm... I'm trying to answer this really to the best of my ability because I know I do have a lot of nieces. I do have a lot of nieces and nephews and I do, I do know that they change at the drop of a hat. Be aware that they are finding themselves. The children mm-hmm. who 
who are supported the most, they thrive. They absolutely thrive because when they find that one thing that they're, they're really drawn to, they, they pursue. 